the internet is a part of uh, most of our lives. Whether we're uh, streaming a, a sporting event, whether we're time shifting a TV program, or just checking on the latest uh, musings from Grumpy Cat, um, <laughs> it's still part of what we do every day, often much of the day. So what happens if you don't have access to the internet, or if your access is in some way limited? What if you can't physically tap into the network, afford to pay for the services, or find digital content uh, that's accessible and readable? And everyone assumes if you put everything on the internet, everyone can get access to it. And that's a great, it's a great fallacy. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I think the best way to understand the internet is just another tool. Um, uh, essentially, uh, the first issue is around affordability of, of internet access. Um, and the availability of information around access to the internet that is in a, a simple form for the average user to understand. What this is about is ignorance and people just not knowing. A lot of people still say to me, oh, I, I have no idea that blind people can use the internet. And not only you know, do, do um, restaurateurs say that, but web developers, particularly some of the smaller companies and even some of the larger ones too, say it. Um, so there is a lack of awareness about what the internet means and what can be, what can be accessed. If we can't get this right, seniors are going to be greatly disadvantaged I know that seniors can be very, very tentative about using anything new. They're not sure whether they should be using the internet. They're a little bit afraid of uh, privacy issues. They're terrified of emerging technology and tablets and mobile devices where they see these wonderful displays on TV about people doing magic things with a mobile device. But then they think, how much is that going to cost me? And very often they won't even try to use any of those marvellous things because they're afraid they'll get a bill that they can't afford. Yeah. It, uh, seniors need to be helped to learn how to use technology. And my greatest worry is that there is a whole group of people who are not engaging with any form of technology. Perhaps a phone, but other than that, they don't want to know about it. And, and if you look at it, it's not just about access to information, there's a, there's a, a huge uh, economic burden here. So say for example, I don't know how many of us use the internet to check our bank account details. Most of us in this room would, right? You know, in the very remote communities, if you walk up to, a, if you walk up to a, an ATM or an F plus machine in one of the remote community centres, uh, shops, it can cost you up to $5 just to check your balance. Every single time you check your balance, it costs you up to five dollars. Could you imagine that? Imagine how we would feel if we logged on every time it costs us five dollars just to check our balance. And you're not talking, and you're not talking about communities with lots and lots of income either, or people with lots of income. You've got to put that into context. And you made a really good point about how do you access information? How do we access? How do we know that we can get access to the internet? That's a major problem. We're still. At, a, at, a, at an entry point, and it's unclear as to what, you know, just how far-reaching yep. those changes will be. I think we have an opportunity now that may never come again for us to enshrine access to this, uh, you know, to the internet and whatever evolves from it as as a fundamental human right that we all have.